We do not walk by sight, we walk by faith. Who is the we? It is we that are in Christ, we that are born again, we that have Christ dwelling inside of our lives. This is the foundation even of our Christian faith. We have to believe that God is, we have to believe that Jesus died for us. Without faith, you cannot even get saved. But faith goes beyond just the matter of forgiveness of sin. It goes beyond that because every single day of your life, you have to live and walk by faith. You look at the behavior of this man and how he calls on the name of Jesus. And when he's called and what he asked for, you know that he had had what other people had experienced by meeting Christ. He knew what Christ had done for other blind men like himself. The problem is many times when we hear what God is doing for other people, we start getting jealous of them. We start digging so much detail and asking them, how could you do this? How, how are you able to do this? Where did you steal or what, what did you? So we, instead of being inspired, we get jealous of other people. Those who expose themselves to testimonies and the dealings of God with other people, they are the ones that actually get to grow their faith. Being inspired by other people's faith and uh, by other people's testimonies is very important for somebody's faith. You will never get anything important, anything meaningful from God if your faith does not know how to resist opposition. Developing your faith for supernatural increase. And this is Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho. This is Jesus and, and the disciples uh, came to Jericho. And he was leaving Jericho uh, with his disciples and a great crowd. But Timaeus, a blind beggar, son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, our rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. And uh, just uh, to note there, Jesus doesn't say, uh, go your way, I make you well. He says, it's your faith. Because Jesus was in the presence of a lot of people who had a lot of problems, but they didn't have faith. So it's not just the presence of Jesus, and now it's not just that he's there, but if, if, whether you have faith in him, whether you have the faith that draws power and draws what you need from his presence. I want to discuss today on five things that you need to develop uh, faith for supernatural increase. Uh, just highlighting some things out of this portion of scripture. I remember uh, sharing from this portion of scripture when I was talking about garments and um, just highlighting a few things about uh, this life. Uh, I just want to highlight some aspects of the faith of Bartimaeus that is quite different from any other kind of faith that is displayed in the scripture and five things that we get from there, and five things that we pick from there, and I'm, I know God is going to bless you, and God is going to uh, speak and minister to our, our hearts. There are five things that I, I hope you'll get each one of them, five things. They, I cannot call them ingredients, I, but, I, but I'll say they are, they, are, they are gems, they are important. Some of them you will never develop faith unless you have these things. And why do I talk much about faith? Uh, because I talk about faith because it is the one thing that the Bible says, without it, you'll never see God. The Bible says it is impossible to please him without faith. It is impossible to be pleasing to God without faith. And many people take the issue of faith as just another issue. It's an optional matter. I don't have to tick on the box. But faith is one of the most important things for us to have if we are going to have a productive Christian life. A productive Christian life cannot happen without developing your faith. And some people say, I'm frustrated, I'm trying to develop this thing, it's not working. Keep working until it works. 
Keep trying until you get all the missing pieces, until faith works in your life. This is the foundation even of our Christian faith. We have to believe that God is. We have to believe that Jesus died for us. Without faith, you cannot even get saved. But faith goes beyond just the matter of forgiveness of sin. It goes beyond that because every single day of your life, you have to live and walk by faith. And that's why Paul said that we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. Who is the we? It is we that are in Christ. We that are born again. We that have Christ dwelling inside of our lives. We live our lives by faith. We don't live our lives by sight. And that causes and that puts a distinction between us and the world. Between us and the world. There are so many things we don't do and some people in the world don't do. Other religions don't do. The difference between us and them is that we do not do those things because we walk by faith. We do the things we do because we do them by faith. And when we do those things by faith, then we have a blessing. Then God actually blesses us and credits righteousness uh, to us. And so that's why I go through all these different characters, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and I draw out lessons about faith so that we can know, we can learn, and I'll keep going round and round until finally faith sinks in your life. Uh, because faith leaks. You can be full of faith, and uh, you leave this place full of faith. If you don't build it, it will leak out of your life. Faith has to be used. Faith is like a muscle that has to keep being exercised. If you don't exercise it and use it, you are going to lose it, and may even cause you pain if you don't actually use it. So what are the five things? And I, I just want to go to uh, them right away. One of the things that uh, we learn from Bartimaeus is, um, is to let what God is doing in other people's lives uh, inspire our faith. Faith, if you want to develop great faith, you have to let what God is doing in other people's lives uh, inspire your faith. And I want us to just go back to Jericho today, just this small city that has no walls. It's not the Jericho that had walls in the beginning. Uh, by this time, this is a city whose walls, because uh, when the walls fell down, Joshua said, let no man ever build the walls of this city. And so they were never built. A man, Ariel, actually came back, Hail, uh, came back and actually tried to rebuild the walls. And, and Joshua had said, if someone tries to rebuild these walls, on the foundation will be uh, the youngest child, and when he finishes to build the gate, the oldest son will die. And this man, as he was building, all his children died, from the youngest to the oldest. So this city, Jericho, at this time is a very different city. Jesus is moving out of this city, and there is a blind man. We are not told there were two or five he was just a lone blind man that sat by a corner. This man cannot read the Bible. This man has no exposure to the scriptures. They didn't have tape. They didn't have, uh, you know, YouTube. They didn't have anywhere he could actually have had the message of the gospel so that he can build his faith. He relied on what people were saying. And he must have heard at some point that Jesus does something to blind people. And when he does whatever he does, they get to see. You look at the behavior of this man and how he calls on the name of Jesus. And when he's called and what he asked for, you know that he had heard what other people had experienced by meeting Christ. He knew what Christ had done for other blind men like himself. He was well versed in that. He was confident that this had happened. He probably had checked the stories. He probably had confirmed with so many other people. He was sure. But, and so he was inspired that if I meet this same Jesus that has done this for other people, this same Jesus will do it for me. He was inspired by what Christ had done for other people. He had not read the story of Bartimaeus, neither had he read anything in the New Testament. He must have had the stories, and those stories inspired his faith. And many of us really have to understand that for you to be inspired in your faith, you have to be curious about what God is doing in other people's lives so that your curiosity will cause you to be inspired 
And when you, you are inspired, then your faith can grow. This is the one secret about faith that many people actually stay away from. But this is one thing that I hope and I pray that you will uh, actually adopt from today. Follow up other people. Find out people, uh, what is God doing for other people in your field? Not just in your field, your age mates. Not just your age mates, uh, you know, family, people like yourself. What has God done for their lives? And, do not, and many people actually hear those stories, but instead of being inspired by them, they, are actually, they actually get jealous of, of what God is doing in other people's lives. It's not a problem to know that God has established so and so financially. It's not a problem to know God has established so and so in this way in their life. That God has done this for them. They're able to build this. They're able to do that project. They were able to improve their lives in a certain way. The problem is many times when we hear what God is doing for other people, we start getting jealous of them. We start digging so much detail and asking them, how could you do this? How, how are you able to do this? Where did you steal? Or what did you? So we, instead of being inspired, we get jealous of other people. But let me tell you something, that it is those who expose themselves to testimonies and the dealings of God with other people, they are the ones that actually get to grow their faith. Have you seen, sometimes you go visit a friend of yours, you are thinking that everyone is at your level, you go visit their home, and you see some improvements, some advances, uh, some things that they have done to their home, and this is on a very basic level to their home. And when you come back, you are, your staff doesn't look the same. Because you are looking at it and saying, how come... I cannot improve myself. I've just been sitting down here and other people have done it. And if God has done that for them, you get inspired to be able to do the same for your life. I get inspired by what God has done for other pastors. I get inspired by what God is doing all over the world through other ministries. And that inspires my faith to know that if God did that for so and so many years ago, currently, then he can do the same for us. Being inspired by other people's faith and uh, by other people's testimonies is very important for somebody's faith. And I'll relax a little bit because I want this one to sink. Remember an example that we have in the Old Testament of a, uh, of a woman called Ruth uh, uh, and uh, Naomi. Naomi had gone and left Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. And she had left that land and had gone away from God's people because there was a famine. And when she was in the other country, she suffered a lot. In that country, she ended up losing her husband. They, she died, and their, her two sons died, and she was left with two young ladies who actually were widows at this time, and she herself was a widow at this time. And she was there probably toiling and going through suffering. But she heard that God had remembered her land. She heard that God had remembered his people. There was bread again in Bethlehem. And so when she heard that, she was inspired to go back to her home country. She felt if God is doing that, she's not going to sit here in Moab and start cursing the people that are in that land and start talking bad about that land. What she did is she said, if God is doing that to people, let me go back there and see what God can do for me there. If there is blood in that land, I'm going to go back. She was inspired by God's actions in another land, and she ended up traveling back with Ruth, and she went there, and God did something great for her. And I want you to understand that it is that inspiration. She was inspired by what God was doing in other people's lives. That inspiration is what made a difference for her life. And I also want you to understand that it is the same deal for many of us Many of us are stuck at one level. We get inspired when we see someone, go, our, our peer, someone that we have, all the factors are the same in our lives, but they have managed to go to the next level. And when you see that, it's something in you says, if God has done that for them, I can also do that. And that's how we get inspired and we inspire one another to go to the next level. The Bible says that we, start, we challenge one another to love and good works. That is something that we are encouraged to do. That good works uh, of another person should inspire you to actually have the same in your life. That we can encourage one another, we can build each other up, and we can challenge one another so that we can do what is right. Get inspired by other people. And that's why I pray that 2021 is going to be a different year for you. 
if you are going to have this faith that actually, uh, and you are going to experience supernatural increase in your life, you have to be inspired. Check what God is doing in other people's lives and genuinely be happy for them. Genuinely be happy for them. If you find out what your friend is doing and accomplishing, encourage and tell them, you are inspiring me. I'm going to borrow that from you and I'm going to walk in this direction and actually ask as much as you as you can. And when you learn something new, challenge the other person. If the house of God can learn to do that, it will be great, it will be amazing that we can inspire one another to love and good works and we can be able to continue and walk along in the faith. Bartimaeus sitting there as a blind man who has actually been living a life of solitude, sitting on the floor, many people passing and just giving him maybe a few coins here and there when they remember him, some even kids mocking him, inside this man's life, inside his heart, he, was, he had the story of other blind men and that inspired him and so he, we were, he had faith. He was be- so when he had Jesus had come in town, he knew this is my moment. The same thing he did for others, that same, I'm going to ask him and he will do the same for me. This is being inspired by the faith of other people. Hearing, and that's why hearing and sharing testimonies is great. Now, I, I, I did ministry, uh, you know, before coming to this country, I did ministry in Africa, but, but I'll tell you something about North America specifically. And I know some people are watching me from, uh, watching us from all over the world, but I'll tell you something very particular about North America here. One of the things and one of the predominant spirits in this uh, country is competition. Competition is one of the most destructive spirits especially when it gets in God's house. It is destroying families. It is destroying, uh, you know, homes. It is destroying relationships, and it's destroying God's people. Because when I see someone has done something good, instead of congratulating them, getting happy for them, this thing grips your heart. If you cannot do what they are doing, it's now time to tear them down. It's not now time to speak bad and evil against them and slander them because many times there's nothing uh, to say, but you still find th- stuff to say. And instead of when you see God lifting somebody else, when you see God helping somebody else to go to the next level, then you get excited. You, you want to actually ask God, can you do the same for me? But even if you don't, I'm happy they have it. I'm happy they have this. I remember we had had a function not too too long ago, I mean uh, sometime last year. And we needed a a certain vehicle to help. And uh, we needed a good car. And uh, so, and that was a function that was important. We needed a car. And then I I asked around and I had, because we didn't want to go, you know, uh, you know, Lisa Limo. So, or a, a different kind of, so what we did is we asked around and we knew somebody here in the church who had a good car, premium vehicle, very nice car. And so I was excited. I said, oh, they have that? I, I did, they have it? So I called them and I said, can you help me out tomorrow morning? This is what I need. If you can help me do this for so and so, it wasn't mine. If you can do this for so and so, that will be great. And um, lo and behold, the next morning, they did that and they helped us. And I came back and said, it's good that in God's house, other people are blessed. I don't need that kind of a car. I don't need that size of a car. I don't need it in my life. So I'm not going to be asking God to give me that car. As long as I know they have it, it's almost like I do have it. When they have it, I don't have to worry. They are able to, you know, because I only need it once in a while. And when I need it, I know they are blessed. If I know someone else that is blessed in that way, I don't have to compete with anyone. I don't have to to run around and stress myself. I'm happy that God has done that for them. You can be blessed by God blessing other people. But also beyond that, you can be inspired. If I was a businessman, I would be inspired by many of the business ideas that I see around. I would ask people questions and I would say, please teach me how to do this thing. Is it, is it doable? Is it possible? I'm not, you know, and, and the field is right. And if someone has a good heart, they'll teach you and they'll show you so that you can also be blessed and so that you can also increase. And I'm, I'm asking that God help us, 
that we learn how to look at what God is doing in other people's lives because he does it to those that are close to us so that he can also lift us. He does it so that he can also encourage us and say, if so and so can do this, then God can do the same. I can do, God is saying, I can do the same for you. I, I can accomplish the same for your life. And many of you uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. I, do, I don't want to be too detailed, but when I say the spirit of competition is a killer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm going to encourage you very much in 2021. Look around your friends. Look around uh, not just your friends, but also other people you know. Walk into people's house, uh, offices and, and talk to them and say, please, can you, can you tell me? Can you speak to me? I need to be encouraged. I, I'm down uh, I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, you know, to make, head, make headway in this area. I do not know how to do it. Can you tell me what I can do? Can you show me and coach me, even for a month? And then God, many times, you know, works wonders and many times works miracles. I have the habit of, if I know you know something, and some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and I see somebody else that is stuck, I will always, or somebody else that really is dreaming big, I will always point people and I will say, hey, by the way, can you go talk to so-and-so? Can you go? And many of you know that I've done that. Can you go talk to so-and-so and tell them I'm the one who actually asked you to go there because they shared with me what God is doing in their life. And some people have been helped by that. Some people have been lifted. Some people have been encouraged. Some people have been established. And they have come back and helped other people. Because I'll also send, because I can see how you are doing. I'll send other people to your way. And I'll say, remember what so-and-so did for you? Can you do this for so somebody else? Let's get inspired by one another. Let's get inspired by seeing the works of God and the testimonies of what God is doing in other people's lives. And that is one of the lessons that I learned from Bartimaeus. He had testimonies. He had the words of other people. And he knew what Jesus can do. And that inspired his faith. The number two thing I want to get into here is that great acts of faith are born from personal initiative. If you want to have great faith, or if you want to do great things in faith, you must have personal initiative, however low you are in your life. I mean, I don't think it gets as bad as when you, are, you don't have a place to sleep because you cannot build your own house. You are a beggar. You cannot, you cannot even see. You cannot even count your own money that people give to you. In those days, people that were blind were really... Like, uh, because people didn't consider it like you are normal. People thought that there's something wrong with you or something wrong that you have done in your life. Actually, one man came to Jesus and said, that man that you see there, that blind man, is it him or is it his parents? Who, who did, who sinned for that to happen in that man's life? I want you to understand that blindness and other uh, de deformities in the body in those days were not considered a blessing. They were a curse in somebody's life. Bartimaeus was used to that kind of life. He was used to being alone and he, being in the lowest place. Had never done anything for his life. But now he's sitting there and he, he thinks, you know, people are just excited. Jesus is in town. Everyone is concerned about their own welfare, what they can get from Jesus, the experience that they can get. And Batiba sitting there thinks, if I don't do something for myself, none of these people is going to help me. In fact, when he started shouting and calling on the name of the Lord, they quieted him down. They said, don't speak, don't say anything. He had to have something on the inside of him that, that was saying, I will have to do something. I will have to act now and I'll have to do something if I'll see a change in my own life. Having personal initiative, having something that inside of you that wants to start doing something for yourself. You have goals, you have plans for the year, you have prayers, you have things that you're asking God to do for you this year. But unless you know exactly that, you, unless you know that it is you that will have to do something, if you are going to, do, to see change, you have to initiate, you have to start this ball rolling. Unless you start something, it may never happen in your life. So he sits there, he had an idea of how to attract the attention of Christ. 
He didn't have much of a chance because all the people were shouting, they were surrounding him. But he knew the only thing I have is my voice. It's my death. That's the only thing I have. I cannot even see where he is. But when that noise starts coming my way, I'll know that it's him. And I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout. I'll surprise everybody. So he had an idea. was probably not the smartest idea. Maybe not the best idea. Maybe there were other better ideas. But he acted on his idea. That is what initiative is about. It's not about writing ideas and writing goals and writing plans. It's about doing something. It's about doing something with your life. Having an idea and pursuing it and doing something about it. Initiative is that. Initiative is saying, I do not know anybody else who have ever done it this way. But I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to try it out this way. And if I know someone who has done it this way, I'll do it this way. And I'm going to continue and even do it better. Having initiative is very, very important in somebody's life. And that is a responsibility many Christians do not want to take. And so many, many of us actually have this kind of faith. When we want something done, we take it to God in prayer. And so we pray. And God says, okay, I have had your prayer. It is done. I have granted it to you. And in the spirit, he releases it. And he wants you to start doing something. Because you are praying in faith. You start acting like God has already released it. But many people do not actually take it that way. Well, so they pray and then they come back and pray again. And they come back and pray again. And God is saying, okay, you asked me for a job. I gave you a job. It's in such and such a company. It's in downtown Marriott or somewhere. That's where your job is. God is not going to send the manager to your house to come and pick you up. You have to go out because... You believe and take initiative and go out and seek for it. You have to go out and find that which you are believing God for. That is initiative. And so I want you to understand that Bartimaeus is one of the greatest examples of personal initiative. Someone who sat there, he did not have a cheerleading team. He didn't have coaches and life coaches and blind people's guides and all that. He used his own mouth and he said, Jesus, son of David, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He made so much noise above the voices of other people until Jesus had to stop. I don't know whether he cried out. There's a, a particular loud shout he made that made Jesus say, no, that's different. That's not like all these other people that are surrounding me for fish and bread. There is something different about that cry. And so he stopped. Personal initiative is what has stopped the faith of a lot of people. You must have personal initiative if you are going to actually have great faith. Okay, number three is great faith begins with stretching out your prayer to God. If you want to have uh, and see God do great things, uh, you have to start uh, with uh, stretching out your prayer to God. He cried out. The Bible says, uh, he cried out, he said, Jesus, son of David, this is in verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus had to stop when he heard this. So you have to see, you, I, I pray that you can see that faith, great faith, cannot happen without great prayers. Great faith and great prayer, they go hand in hand. The great prayer that you make will avail great things in your life, and that's what people will call great faith. You had great faith, and that's why this happened for your life. He cried out, not just the cry of a shouting man, not just the cry of a triumphant man, he cried the cry of a desperate, broken man. He was a desperate man. The man that was saying, I am tired of this life. I know there is something better, and I need your help now. It is the cry of a broken man that Jesus had. He's saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is someone that is saying, is not asking for God's faithfulness. He's not asking for justice in any way. 
He's not asking for to be paid back for something that he has done. He's not calling to complain that billions of people can see except me. He's not calling God to remind him what he doesn't have. What he's saying is, have mercy on me. I probably deserve what I have. I probably deserve the blindness that I have. But have mercy on me. Give me what I don't deserve. Give me what I don't deserve. You're a merciful God. You're a merciful sin. So he cried out the cry of a, of a desperate man, of a broken man. And that is what God always answers to. Many of us are so full when we come to God and we are so full of ourselves, we are so full of our abilities and our talents and our things and what we have, and uh, God is just lucky to have me around. You know, we are so full that it's hard for us to be broken before the presence of God. Isaiah 57 verse 15, the Bible says, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place. I dwell in the high and holy place. And he says, with him who, who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. He's saying, yes, I am God Almighty, and I dwell in the highest place. But where, where I dwell in the high, highest place, I'm there with the humble person. It's, it's something that I want you to understand. That the, the lower you go, the more you humble yourself, the higher God takes you. The higher God takes you. Humble yourself, he will lift you up. Lift yourself, he will humble you. And many times, humiliate you. So God speaks to us to have humble and contrite hearts. And when we cry out with that kind of heart, God always answers. So great faith will begin with a cry of desperation. And that cry many times is a cry that says, God, I am 30, or I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm 20, whatever it is. That cry begins there and says, I need to see a change in my life. I need to see a difference in my life. I, I, I cannot put anything before you. I cannot complain about anything. It's your mercy that I seek. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Whatever I have done wrong, forgive me. Forgive and cleanse me. Whatever, whatever I failed, whatever I have not accomplished, forgive me. I come for mercy. I come for mercy. And God says, you come with boldness to the throne of grace and mercy, and he will always give that to you. And he will give that to you in abundance every time you come uh, to him. But Myers uh, cries for mercy like a broken man, and that is a shortcut to the presence of God. If you want to see great faith this year, if you want to see great faith you must have that initiative. You must be inspired by other people. You must also come to God as a broken man, a broken man, a broken heart. The Bible says God will never turn away. He will never turn away a heart that is broken. Whatever stuff that you have done in your life, whatever you have messed up in your life, you come down to God, come back to God, a broken person, God always actually will have mercy on you and God will never crush you just because you come to him uh, broken. And great faith is persistent. Great faith never gives up, never stops. Great faith is completely persistent, and it keeps going forward. It's not stopped by opposition. There are those who are, you know, they, they think God cannot bless your life. They think your case is gone. They think they are better than you. They think they are deserving of God's mercy and blessings, but you are not. They are those that see themselves as more worthy before God than you are. And so they will stand in opposition to you, actually thinking that they are doing God's service by opposing you. There are people that are saying, don't bother the master. They think they are serving God and protecting Jesus from, you know, they are the ashes. They are protecting him from being bothered. The master is tired and he's going all the way to Jerusalem, coming out of Jericho. The master is tired. Don't bother him in any way. But, but Jesus stops. Jesus stops when he hears the cry of Bartimaeus because Bartimaeus is important in the presence of God. Bartimaeus is as worthy in the presence of God as any other person that was standing with their two eyes and their two hands and their two legs. He was important and worthy like any of the other people. And so his faith was this Jesus here. I, I want him to tell me 
that he doesn't want to hear me. I'm not going to take it from anybody else. I will persist in my faith. I'm not giving up. He didn't say, oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then all of a sudden Jesus stopped. No. I want to tell you for sure this was a battle. This was a shout. This people are saying, hey, 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 you're making too much noise. This has, when they were telling him not to, to shout that much, they probably were trying to hold him down. But I see a dramatic man here. Because even when Jesus stops and he says, let him come, that means that some people were holding him back. He was going to persist and fight. And he was going to make sure that God hears him. I'll tell you something about faith. You will never get anything important, anything meaningful from God if your faith does not know how to resist opposition. Your faith has to know to have that stamina that says, yes, I hear that, I hear no, I hear that turn down, I hear that, I hear this, I see that, you know, that rejection letter, I see all this, but I know God has an answer for me. I know God has something special for my life. When it takes longer, you say, great things take longer to prepare. Amen? And so you can tell yourself that. If you want to, if you want to boil rice, rice takes just a few minutes uh, on, the, on the microwave. But if you are preparing something like gideri or chapati, stuff that will stay longer in your stomach, that actually takes a little bit longer to prepare. Great things take longer. And that's why sometimes when you're asking God something that is uh, important or greater, it takes a little bit of a while for you to get it. And that's so being not receiving right away should not be a deterrent. It should not stop you from moving forward. And I just want to encourage many of you that give up too easily. You are not persistent in your faith. You don't allow time. And patience, patience is taking longer to boil. Persistence is not just laying back and taking it. Persistence is continuing to do what you are doing in the midst of opposition and continuing pouring all your energy into it without being discouraged by the current circumstances that are surrounding you. Waking up in the morning, nothing is working for you. Only hope that you have hope in your life. And you are looking at the word of God and saying, because God says that, that is the anchor of my hope. And I'm going to stand here and trust in God. And I want you to know that those who persist in their faith always see the answer. And that is sometimes what stops Jesus and he stops dealing with other people around him. And he says, bring that file. Because he said, hey, what is going on? Tell him to come. That is Bartimaeus' file at that point was in heaven right at the table and God was looking at his file. And he looks at it and he said, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, master. He did, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. This man knew exactly what he was saying. This is still one of the greatest examples that I have in the Bible of faith. He stands there. People are saying, and they say here in Mark 10, 48, and many rebuked him telling him to be silent. Many are saying, be silent. These are the people that used to give him money. They are saying, be silent. But he cried out all the more. The more they silence him, the more he cries. The more they put him down, the more he cries. The more things don't work, the more he cries. That's why the Bible says, men always ought to pray and never lose heart. Don't give up until you see what God has promised to do in your life. Until you see what you need to see from the hand of God, you don't stop, you don't give up, you persist and keep fighting and keep moving forward. It's not faith if it's not persistent. It's not faith if it's not persistent. It's not faith if it's not persistent. It has to be persistent that you are coming back and coming back and coming back. And Jesus said about the judge, the judge who feared not God, neither did he honor any man. He said, this woman persisted. This old woman was coming every day to say, to, to say I need vengeance. I avenge me from my enemies. And she came. And this judge, though he did not respect anybody, he said, this woman will wear me out. I'll do this for her. And that teaches us how to be persistent in our faith and to keep asking and to keep doing and to keep walking and to keep calling. And without giving up, God is going to move on our behalf. And the last thing I want to say here is great faith is developed by learning 
or knowing how to ask big in our lives. Asking big and saying to God, I need something big in my life. Learn to believe God for great things. Learn to believe God for great things. And I want you to look up here because I know you are probably looking at your couch or trying to type something. Just look up here. Teach yourself how to ask big things from God. I want to say that again. Know how to, this year 2021, stop asking for little small things. Let those just happen. Start with the big things that you're asking from the hand of God. Teach yourself to ask. Bartimaeus stands there. He's standing before Christ. Christ has this big crowd that is following him. He's the man who gives fish and bread. He's the man who sends Peter to go and get fish. And, uh, get a fi- and from the mouth of the fish get a gold coin and be able to pay for taxes. He can ask for anything. He stands there. He's usually asked for money from people. And Jesus says to him, what do you want from me? If he had said money, I mean, this guy would have probably been given a lot of money. If he had said food, maybe he would have gotten a lot of food. But he looks at, he's there, he cannot see, of course, but he says to him, I need to see. This is the ultimate. I mean, there was nothing more that bigger than this that Bartimaeus could could have asked. He said, I want to see. He's not making it easy for Christ. He is asking big, instead of asking money, because when he left the house in the morning, he probably was just coming to ask for money. But when he hears this Christ, he says, forget money. I need him to give me my sight. I want to see. And so, Bartimaeus is one great example of a person who asks big. And I'm sure that if uh, Bartimaeus was uh, uh, some people, he probably would have said, let me ask for money, (laughs) you know. I'm used to, you know, not seeing. Let me just ask for money. There are many people actually who do not know how to ask God for the big things of life. They are only just asking, if I can only make it through today, if I can only survive, if I can only do this, you know, if I can. So, but, but we are people of faith. And this year, sit down with your plans. January, you should now be finished up with your plans, you should now be knowing exactly what you want God to do in your life. And this month, January, uh, when we jump into the month of February, is when you now start asking big things. The things you have never asked from God, this is the time to ask for those things. Teach yourself to ask God for big things in your life. Big things. And I'm just encouraged, I don't know what it is in your mind. I don't know what you have thought is impossible with God. If you are being inspired by what God has done for other people, see what God is doing for other people and say, Father, if you can do that for so and so, you can do even more for me. And you can take me higher. You can take me to different places. These are the things that I want to encourage you. And because these are the practical things of life that challenge many people in their life. Many people know how to uh, live righteous, walk in righteousness, but they do not know the stuff of life that makes us productive in the kingdom of God, that makes the kingdom grow and expand, that makes us actually enjoy life and full, live this life in the fullness or in the abundance that God actually wants us to live. May God use the life of Bartimaeus to inspire us so that our lives are going to know how to ask big in our lives, that we can know how to pray great prayers in our lives, that we can know exactly how to uh, have that persistence in our lives, that we can have the initiative that we need in our lives, because unless you have the initiative and you know how to actually initiate and start things in your life, you'll never go anywhere, and also you learn how to be inspired by what God is doing in other people's lives. Those five things are going to make your faith grow. They are going to make your faith expand. And the first and the simplest of them all is to look around and see what God is doing around your life, and that will give you an idea of what God can do for your life. See what God is doing in other people's lives. And look beyond the clothes. Look beyond the cars. See what God is doing for other people and ask him because God can do the same for your life. Don't listen to what the devil says. 
God is no respecter of persons. If he has done it for other people, that same God can do the same for your life, and God is going to do the same for you. I know um, that is a, not a shouting message. It's a, is a, is a message where... I know believers don't like it when they are given work to do, when it's a challenge, when it's something I have to do. And so, but I just know that that is a word that is going to transform your life. You take those practical things and apply them in your life, and you'll see how God moves your life forward in a very simple way. Get inspired by other people. When you get inspired, take initiative, persist in your faith, keep doing what you're supposed to do, pray big prayers, and uh, ask God the big things that you need in your life. You will see the hand of God at work you will see the hand of God at work in your life. Let's pray together as we finish our message today. Father, thank you so much for speaking and ministering to us. We take and receive this word. We receive this word from your presence. And I ask that in Jesus' name you'll cause this word to be practical in people's lives. Cause this word to transform somebody's life. Cause it to make an impact Cause it, Father, to be fruitful. Let it challenge someone this week. In the name of Jesus, let this word challenge somebody's life this week. In the name of Jesus, let this word lift somebody's life. Open somebody's life to the next level. In Jesus' name. And Father, that the life of Bartimaeus that you put in the scriptures... Mighty God, that it will be a lesson, it will be an inspiration, it will be something that is going to cause us to walk with you. And Father, be able to experience the great things that you have for our lives. Open our eyes to see what you are doing in other people's lives. And help us to overcome the flesh, competition, jealousy, envy. Those things that are of the flesh are going to be removed and abolished from our lives. That our Father, we can be able to celebrate the victories of other people and more than that be inspired by those victories so that we can also testify in our own lives of the goodness, the faithfulness and the grace of our God. We give you praise. We give you praise. I pray for these people uh, that at home that are watching and hearing this message. I pray Father for them. Many of them Mighty God, are trusting in you for great things, trusting in you, wanting to see the hand of God in their life. And Father, I pray that you'll stretch your hand and touch them and minister to them. Those that are needing a miracle, our King and our God, that you're going to perform it in their life in Jesus' name. And so help us, help us, King of glory, help us. If you're there at home, you need God to do something in your life, you have a need. And you want someone to touch and agree with you in faith. I just want you to stretch your hand towards your TV, towards your phone, whatever you are watching on, computer. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person stretching their hand in faith because they have a need. And you, God, who is in all places at all times, you see and you know exactly where they stand. So, Father, I'm asking that you're going to meet them there at the point of their need. That you're visiting them there right now in Jesus' name. And our Father, I pray that your hand will do them good. I come against the devil, demonic spirits that are coming to discourage their life. Bind them in the name of Jesus. And our Father, I pray that your hand is going to work in these people's lives. Father, we will hear testimonies of your doing open their lives to a new day, a new miracle in their life. The Father, they are going to experience victory in the specific areas they are trusting you for. Father, you know the exact reason why they are lifting up their hand towards you in faith. And I bless them and I pray that mighty God, you have met that need. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name.